How to Summon Rakshasi Lankini As is traditional in most tantric apichara practices, one must perform this ritual when the sun is completely set, that is at night. This is regardless of what time zone you are in, it must be when it is completely dark from sunlight. Please note, artificial light or candlelight is required when you write the symbols or yantra down, as described in the next section. The yantra to summon the entity is shown on the video. Historically, many Ayanists choose 2 a.m. in the morning to perform this ritual. When the sun is visible the positive energy of the sun god Surya permeates this realm and can dispel the negative resonant energy required to link up with the Tala. In other words, if you try to perform this ritual during the day it will not work unless you are a very high level tantric Ayanist practitioner and are very linked with the entity you are trying to call. In order to break down the gap between our realm and the tall of the entity exists in, you must first inscribe the ancient Dravidian Ayanist Yantra, which is shown in the image, onto the floor. This is the specific Yantra that was revealed to us by the demon Myalakan, as described previously. In other words, you must copy the image you see in the video, onto the floor. This can be done directly onto the floor or on paper. This can also be done using candlelight to see, or using a lamp or lantern. Artificial electric light is also permitted, but do not make the light too bright. The method of copying can be done in a few ways that are traditional to various Ayanist schools. You can either draw the symbols onto the ground using a wooden stick, or if the ground is too hard you can use charcoal. If you are inside your house you may also use paper placed onto the floor and inscribe the tantric symbols using charcoal. By writing down the Ayanist inscription, or yantra, onto the floor, the link between our reality and the dimension the entity resides in will be open. To facilitate resonant transference of energy, to create the doorway or tunnel, it is imperative that you chant the name of the entity you are trying to contact. So, once the inscription is finished, the final part in unlocking the gateway between this realm and the Tala is chanting the mantra of Rakshasi Lankini, Rakshasi Lankini, Rakshasi Lankini. You must keep chanting Rakshasi Lankini until you begin to feel the presence of the Rakshasi. As you chant the mantra, feel yourself becoming relaxed and meditative and allow your spirit to enter into the realm of the Rakshasa Tala. It will usually take 100 chants to summon the entity for a practiced tantric Ayanist. For a layperson it may take 100 to 500 chants of this mantra before you feel the presence. And trust us, you will feel the presence in the room with you. For some people who are unattuned it may take longer, but the more times you perform the ritual the stronger your resonance with the Tala and the entity will become. There are some additional notes from the Ayanist Varna Tantric form. You can also stare, for as long as possible, a form of unblinking meditation known as Andranayana, at the Tala image until it fades from view, and changes, such that, the Tala begins to open. As you become more attuned to this process you will see it change before you. Once you feel the presence of the entity, all you need to do, is tell them verbally your wishes, and allow them to do the rest. Remember, entities in Talas and Lokas do not communicate verbally, but speak via the mind and spirit. There is no language barriers between entities, asurs, gods etc., and humans, but by speaking verbally you actually clear your mind and focus on what needs to be said. You can test this yourself, by speaking a clear sentence and trying to have your mind wander at the same time. So, speaking clearly to the entity, will form the basis of the communication. For example, if you wish to curse someone you should tell the entity the name of your enemy, and how you would like them to suffer. The entity will then send the negative energy to your enemy. You can also ask the entity to remove negative energy from you, to give you wealth and power or secret knowledge. Many of our world leaders invoke entities this way, to further their careers or power base. However, many Ayanists do not summon entities for trivial acts such as cursing someone or gaining wealth or power. The real purpose is to become one with the entity, and for you to gain wisdom from the entity, and for the entity to experience this physical realm, and also gain knowledge from you. The merged entity and yourself will have a common purpose, and you will be directed by this entity to fulfill it, as both of you will benefit. This could be being given or made aware of new scientific breakthroughs, so that humanity will be nudged into a certain path, or creating a piece of work, such as art, music or writing, that transcends humanity as it is now, and pushes us, the humans, into an area not yet explored before.
Remember, the aim of all of us, lower beings, humans, and higher entities, is to help Brahman transcend itself. By linking, and becoming one with higher beings, we can begin the reversal process of re-merging, which will eventually lead to the re-merging with Brahman. Also the combined knowledge of multiple beings in one shell, has the advantage of allowing us to see something, that the individual admins may not see in this lifetime. So returning to the ritual. You must perform this action, a ritual, every night, until the act you wish to happen has been carried out and fulfilled. It does not matter, if you miss a night. However, the resonant energy transfer will diminish, if you have long gaps in between invocations. There is something, that we should mention. Entities such as gods, divas, pritas, boots, asuras etc. do not exist in this space-time. They exist in lokas and talas, other dimensions, so can appear to multiple people at the same time. Many Ayanist Hindus practice astral projection, by entering lokas close to our plane of existence, and thus can be seen by many people in different locations. The same process applies to the entities you will call in this course. We will now present a summary of the ritual. The Summary of the Ritual Perform the ritual at 2 a.m., using candlelight, or dim lights. Inscribe the symbols you see in the toilet image on the screen. This must be done onto the floor or paper, using charcoal. Or you can use a wooden stick for sand-covered floor. You can also stare, unblinking, for as long as possible at the toilet image until it fades from view, and opens itself. Chant a mantra, Rakshasi Lankini Rakshasi Lankini, Rakshasi Lankini, until you feel the presence of the Rakshasi. Ask the entity what you wish to happen. Speak clearly. You may ask the entity, politely, to leave you immediately. But the resonant energy link will eventually dissipate, and the entity will naturally depart before sunrise. Unless you actively wish it to remain, as explained in the next point. This part is important. You also may ask the entity to remain with you, so that you will ultimately become one. This is the desired state. So if you wish to transcend yourself, summon the entity, but actively open your mind, body and soul to the possibilities of merging with the being. So that you may be touched by greatness and experience their reality, and the tall they exist in. Also, the entity will be touched by your soul, or admin, and experience this material reality. You will both benefit, share knowledge and ultimately transcend yourselves. If you have difficulties with this method, you may also use the mirror method, which you use to summon the demon Susna, which was given earlier in this course.